Hallo und einen wunderschönen guten Nachmittag an alle cockpitfilme.de Fans. Mein Name ist Gerhard Ramke, ich bin Chief Pilot bei Air Baltic in Riga in Lettland und wir stehen hier vor unserer 19. Maschine des Typs Airbus A220. Diese Maschine wird in einer Woche etwa ausgeliefert. Die befindet sich also in einem relativ äh, weiten Stadium ähm, der Vorbereitung für die Übergabe an uns als Airline. Ähm, Airbus hier in Mirabel, äh, Montreal, wo wir uns zurzeit äh, in, der, in den Produktionshallen befinden, äh, bereitet diese Maschine vor und unsere Techniker und Ingenieure äh, sind also mit dabei, äh, jetzt die Übernahme vorzubereiten. Ähm, wir haben das Vergnügen hier heute die 18. Maschine unserer Flotte zu übernehmen und diese nach Riga zu überführen. Wir haben jetzt also schon ein paar Tage hier verbracht und die Maschine soweit inspiziert, die gesamten Papiere durchgeschaut und unterschrieben. Da wird natürlich dann auch noch ein bisschen Geld transferiert, damit die Maschine dann irgendwann auch uns gehört. Und jetzt ist es auch soweit, dass wir also gleich uns in diese Maschine begeben können und ähm, den äh, etwa achtstündigen äh, Ferryflug äh, von äh, Mirabel nach äh, Riga antreten können. Es wird ein direkter Flug sein. Ähm, wir gucken uns da gleich nochmal die Papiere und die ganzen Flugvorbereitungen an und dann können wir bestimmt dazu noch ein, äh, ein paar Worte sagen. Also erst einmal viel Spaß soweit und äh, eine gute Zeit mit uns an Bord auf dem Flug nach Riga. Hier sind wir jetzt in unserem Büro hier im, in, der, in den Fertigungshallen von Airbus hier in, in Kanada, in Montreal. Wir haben jetzt gerade eben das Briefing abgeschlossen soweit. Ich sitze hier mit meinem Kollegen, unserem Chef der, der, Oper, der Operations-Abteilung, Paul Salidis, mit dem wir heute den, den Flug zurück nach Riga machen werden. Und wir sind eben durch die gesamten Papiere gegangen. Wir sind, haben unsere Route besprochen, das Wetter und natürlich alle spezifischen Details dieses Überführungsfluges nach Riga. Wir werden jetzt gleich raus zur Maschine gehen. Die Maschine ist gerade eben betankt worden und ähm, die hat man jetzt hier vorne vor dem Gebäude abgestellt, 
sodass wir dann auch noch unsere Taschen einladen können, einsteigen können, äh, es uns gemütlich machen können natürlich auch und dann geht es äh, ab nach Riga. Das Wetter heute ist äh, eher mäßig hier, es ist grau, es gibt also unterwegs nicht allzu viel zu sehen, ähm, dennoch ähm, sind die Wetterkonditionen gut. Ähm, wir haben leider Gottes nicht diesen üblichen Rückenwind, ähm, den wir auf dieser Nordatlantikstrecke kennen, da wir uns ein bisschen weiter nördlich bewegen. Das hat dann eher damit zu tun, ähm, dass die Maschine natürlich nicht für den, für den Langstreckeneinsatz äh, gedacht ist, sondern eher ähm, im europäischen Raum auf der Mittel und Kurzstrecke eingesetzt wird und dadurch ähm, wir also mit unseren Einrichtungen und Ausrüstungen eigentlich nicht für diese langen Strecken über den Atlantik äh, vorgesehen sind. Nichtsdestotrotz, wir sind natürlich vorbereitet, haben alles äh, soweit in die Wege geleitet, dass wir dann äh, unseren Flug äh, auch ordentlich und ordnungsgemäß durchführen können. Also, viel Spaß! So you'll be on the headset. We still need a couple of minutes. Okay. So take your time. We'll take a few minutes now. So, wir befinden uns außen, ähm, machen einen Walk around, wie sich das in, äh, in, in, in Englisch nennt. Und ähm, ja, wir wollen jetzt einfach mal gucken, dass äh, auch wirklich alles in Ordnung ist soweit. Obwohl im Grunde genommen das einfach ein, ein äh, standardisiertes Prozedere ist, ähm, das die äh, Techniker für uns schon durchgeführt haben. Diese Maschine kommt ja gerade aus der Produktion, die hat natürlich einige Flüge schon hinter sich. Es waren 18 insgesamt, die sozusagen in die, in die Production Test Flight in den, in den Bereich gehören. Wir haben drei, drei Flüge mit der Maschine durchgeführt, um einfach festzustellen, dass alles sich auch genauso verhält, wie wir das von der Maschine erwarten. Die Techniker, die Ingenieure haben also die Maschine soweit für den Flug vorbereitet und insofern ist das einfach ein, ein Prozedere, dass wir da nochmal einmal rumlaufen. Wir machen das nicht ganz so intensiv, wie wir das normalerweise machen würden, weil die Ingenieure das eben schon für uns gemacht haben. Ähm, ja, und wenn wir das dann tun, wir ähm, gehen einmal im, äh, im Uhrzeigersinn um die Maschine rum. Das macht man dann immer von oben gesehen, damit man äh, ja, einfach immer ein, ein standardisiertes Verfahren hat, ähm, das man äh, anwendet, um die Maschine zu besichtigen. Und dabei guckt man sich dann die gesamten Teile an, wie das Fahrwerk, die Triebwerke, natürlich die Tragflächen, dass sich da keine Schäden irgendwo befinden, die entweder Flüssigkeiten dann äh, beinhalten, die man am Boden wiederfinden würde ähm, und dass da keine Beulen drin sind. Wenn eine Maschine von einem Flug wiederkommt, will man natürlich auch keinen Vogelschlag vorfinden. Das würde man sich also genau angucken. Die Sensoren, die sind natürlich für uns unglaublich wichtig. 
Da stellen wir dann grundsätzlich fest, dass da nichts verbogen ist, entweder durch eine Treppe oder irgendein Fahrzeug, das sich in der Umgebung befunden hat, direkt in der Umgebung des Flugzeugs und dass dann natürlich auch kein Vogelschlagschaden entstanden ist. Das Fahrwerk, die, die Reifen, die sind natürlich nagelneu jetzt. Die haben wie gesagt 18 Landungen hinter sich. Da nutzt natürlich so ein Reifen nicht ab. Ansonsten sieht man immer wieder mal, dass Reifen, Flugzeugreifen nicht wirklich Profil mehr haben. Da ist der Reifen eigentlich noch lange nicht abgenutzt, sondern den kann man dann weiterhin verwenden. Das ist anders als bei Straßenfahrzeugen, also bei LKWs oder bei, bei normalen Autos. Wir brauchen also, wir sind nicht so aufs Profil angewiesen. Nichtsdestotrotz, wenn sie neu sind, haben sie natürlich Profil. Und ähm, wir gucken uns den Zustand insgesamt an, ob da irgendwelche Schnitte drin sind, irgendwelche Delaminierungen in dem Reifen, das würde uns natürlich dann schon besorgen. Die Bremsen hier bei dem, äh, bei dem äh, äh, Flugzeug sind elektrisch. Wir haben also keine Hydraulikflüssigkeit mehr, die da irgendwie austreten könnte. Keine Hydraulikleitungen, die direkt mit den Bremsen zu tun haben. Hier fährt das Fahrwerk nachher ein und äh, man sieht also, dass da im Grunde genommen gar kein Deckel drunter ist, sondern das, das Rad selber ähm, wird dann nachher im Grunde genommen hier direkt abschließen und äh, ja, stellt im Grunde genommen den Deckel selber da für dieses Fahrwerkgehäuse. So, die Maschine befindet sich natürlich in einem tadellosen Zustand. Nicht nur ist sie ähm, frisch lackiert und äh, scheint und glänzt, ähm, sondern ist natürlich alles auch in einem technisch einwandfreien Zustand. Ähm, davon haben sich über die ganzen letzten Tage unsere Techniker in, äh, überzeugen können. Und ähm, ja, ich habe jetzt da nochmal quasi einen, äh, den letzten Rundgang gemacht. Sieht alles wirklich gut aus und wir sind also so weit fertig, dass wir jetzt gleich unseren Flug äh, nach Rega antreten können. Also, bis gleich und viel Spaß. Mirabel Radio, good afternoon. This is our Baltic Bravo Tango India 9801. And we'll be good for runway 06. Air Baltic 9801, Mirabel Radio, good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, sir. We'll uh, be ready very soon. We just want to make sure, we, and we're parked at the moment in the uh, Bombardier apron, and we just want to make sure that you've got an active flight plan for us. We do, routing is not as filed. Uh, advise ready to copy. 
Stand by for a minute. Please keep it. Party had the fly plan for me. Thank you. And Mirabel Radio, Baltic 9801, ready to go. Baltic uh, 9801, Roger. ATC clears Baltic 9801 to the Echo Victor Romeo Alpha Airport via the Sid Mirabel 9 departure. Routing is Bieber, Bravo, India, Bravo, Echo, Romeo, O'Bron, Oscar, Bravo, Romeo, Oscar, November, Mobub, it's Mike, Oscar, Bravo, Uniform, Bravo, Eb Moss, Echo, Bravo, Mike, Oscar, Sierra, Yankee, Quebec, Bravo, Answer, Alpha, November, Charlie, Echo, Romeo, at filed. Depart runway 06, squad code 6211, do not depart until departure validation has been received. Thank you very much, that's all copied, I'll uh, read that back. So runway 06 for us uh, to Riga via the Mirabel 9 departure, Bieber, Oberon, Mobup, Ep, Moss, uh, Yankee, Quebec, Bravo, and then answer, and then uh, after that as filed, and the squawk 6211. We will uh, not be f uh, be departing without validation, and I'll call you back for taxi as soon as we leave the airport. Baltic 9801, uh, Roger, contact me on frequency 121.8 when you're ready to taxi, and read back correct. Thanks very much for the taxi, we'll call you on 101.8, uh, Baltic 9801. Yeah, they actually did this last time as well, uh, oh. where the f initial part of the uh, clearance was uh, changed with these yeah. with these positions. But uh, from we have answer, and then it's flight plan route, so it's uh, just the the, mm -hmm. the first part of the of the routing that yeah. is uh, being adjusted. Cool. So you see. Um, I've just uh, put in the route, I double checked it and we see it makes sense. We have the total distance of uh, 3445 and that matches our flight plan here. Uh, we'll have the chance actually before when we get our, uh, our uh, North Atlantic clearance, we'll recheck the uh, North Atlantic points that are in the FMS. But currently it makes sense and uh, it's giving us a flight time of uh, 7 hours 48 uh, and landing fuel 3.2 tons. So that's for the routing, um, and it's initially planned in the FMS, it's set up for flight level 390, but we know we're shooting for 410 yeah. over the north of the Sure. Yeah. So, uh, actually, ready, actually, we can start with the pre-flight checklist. Cool, give me a minute. Sure. Here comes the pre-flight checklist. Ready? Uh, go ahead, please. Airplane documents. Okay, on board and checked. The emergency equipment. Uh, checked. Gear pins. Uh, on board, so that was confirmed that we have them uh, here. And the overhead panel? Uh, checked, except for recirc there, it's off. Clear. And uh, the glacier? Checked. Displays. Um, let me just get back here. This was done back into map mode, and I'm also going to use a vertical display. So that's checked. Cool. Ice detector test. completed. Circuit breaker is checked. The ICAS and info. Okay, on the ICAS, uh, looking uh, normal uh, with uh, with it being checked here, yeah. and uh, info is also checked. Altimeters. So it's uh, the latest on uh, info. Quebec was two nine or six five, and let's set the cross check. Super center cross checked center panel. Okay, it's checked. The pedestal. It's checked. Rotor trim. Yeah, that's also checked. Side sticks. Checked left. Check right. Oxygen masks. Left is checked. Right is checked. And the flight deck door. That's set. Complete. Perfect. Pre-flight checklist complete. Mm -hmm. So, let us shortly look into performance movie. Yeah, I, I still have, have to complete mine. 0205. Um, 
Eleven was the temperature. Yeah. Eleven. QNH. Two nine or six five. Two nine six five. And uh, take away this yeah, well, 55 4. 55 4, exactly. Super. I've run two calculations full length and then the. Uh, is the full length you have initially? Yeah, I'm using cool. the full length there. And um, I have flaps two. Yes. With um, a takeoff one and a flex of 36. 36 degrees on the flex, yep. takeoff one. Um, with the 79.3 79.3 checked and then uh, 133, 34 and uh, 38 and an accelerate stop distance of 23, 24 that's checked alright, uh, so uh, before start checklist before start checklist we have the takeoff briefing yeah, takeoff briefing um, we have the we're here on the Bombardier apron as we discussed once we get out from Tango, then we'll go to uh, Mirabel Tower or Melbourne Radio. Uh, expecting 06, we'll take the full length, uh, no problem. There's a few uh, aircraft in the circuit, uh, but uh, uh, pretty short taxi to, uh, to our uh, from a uh, short taxi to the holding point for 06. Yeah. Um, and then we're cleared now. Already the Mirabel 9 departure. Uh, that's set up in the uh, FMS here for runway 06. And uh, that's very simple, straight ahead on the heading 060 to climbing 3000. Yeah. Then expecting radar vectors <coughs> to our route. 3007 checked. Yeah, yeah that's there, checked. Um, so the safety altitude is uh, 3300 uh, in the, the north uh, west quadrant uh, for our departure routing, it's 3100. Yeah. For the note, yeah. And, uh, for the non-normals, uh, we're operating with our standard procedure, yeah. so 480 knots, if any problem, we're boarding the takeoff uh, after 80 knots, 31, only for the significant failures, uh, we'll make the stopping procedure. After V1, uh, we're out, uh, we have a takeoff weight currently 55.4, bit overweight, but no problem to come back, whether it's good here in Mirabel or not, so take care of the issues and uh, come back as needed, if, if that's the case. Otherwise, uh, standard procedures. Any questions? Clear, no, none, thanks. Okay, so, so take a briefing. That's completed. Perfect, APU and or external. So we're on the APU. The beacon. Beacon's on. And the power brake. It's on. Cool. That's before start checklist complete. Uh, <laughs> And uh, just delivery put that on. Yep. And we're fully, uh, all doors are uh, closed with the uh, doors armed as well. Perfect. So we've got standard clearance, and uh, I think the gentleman in front is uh, on the lesson and ready for us. Hey, perfect. Okay, so we're fully ready up here uh, for the start sequences starting number one. Good. Okay, let's do it. Uh, cool. Start left. Left engine on. Thank, Thank you. you. And ignition.
Okay, good start on number one now, starting number two. Start right. Right engine on. Bravo Tango Echo, Roger, Mirabel 23303, Smite 2, 9, 6, 5, Kraplan, on That's hydraulic 3, low pressure related. Okay, ground, uh, we have a st good start on number two. Please disconnect, remove chocks, and we're ready to go. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll go and have a good flight. Thank you. Thanks very much. See you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. See you. I can offer you the B4 taxi checklist. Be more than pleased to complete the before taxi checklist. Hydraulic 3A. Okay. Sorry, let's see. Auto 3V on. 2V on. The APU. Okay, APU off. The flaps. 2 selected. The wing anti ice test is not required now. Mm -hmm. The anti ice cowl. So, auto. The anti ice wing. Auto. The flight controls. set for the flux and uh, 36 now we're about to do the speeds again yep but they're except no they're exactly no, you only have to post them yep. yeah okay Check. that's posted and that's super yeah and we have the clear signal ideal so fms set the trims okay it's uh, 6.7 Fantastic. And the ICAS and info. That's checked. Fine. I thought so. Perfect. So that's checked and with that before taxi checklist is complete. You want me to get you some taxi? Yep. So that's with first Super with our, our speak uh, to dispatch first. Dispatch. Yeah. Dispatch. Yeah, Baltic 9-8. Still one. We're ready to taxi. I'll take uh, 9801, uh, you can proceed. We're proceeding with the taxi. Thanks very much for your hospitality. We'll take this uh, beautiful bird to its new home. You have a nice evening and see you soon. Thank you very much and have a good flight, sir. Thank you, Papa. Very impressive. Okay, cool.
Gravel Radio. Hello again, our Baltic 9801 apron of Bombardier. And uh, we're starting our taxi now, approaching the gate. Air Baltic 9801, Mirbel, Radio Ground, Roger, runway 06. Uh, wind 3604, altimeter 2965. Uh, so we can taxi via Tango, Bravo, and uh, Kilo for runway 6. Tango Bravo Kilo Runway 062965 on the altimeter. Altic 9801. Okay, just passing through the gate now. Should be a guy nope. in the car. Right is clear. Yep. Security is. And it'll be now straight on Tango, right on Bravo. Yes, Kilo. Nine eight zero. nine eight zero one on nineteen one with you on Kilo. Baltic nine eight zero one, Roger. Your clearance is valid. Runway zero six. Contact Montreal departures on one two four six five airport. What do you have on one two four six five? Confirm the frequency. Affirmative one two four six five. One four six five one airborne, and uh, we're approaching uh, holding point zero six. We're fully ready for departure. Roger departure at your discretion. At our discretion, I'll take nine eight is it one departure is valid. Perfect. Yeah, the departure is valid. Yep. Uh, let's just quickly do it before take off. Okay. Perfect. So the cabin. It's ready. And the anti ice. It's auto. Auto break. RTO. ICAS and info. And with that, the B4 tank of checklist is complete. We are cleared. The right side approach sector is free. Okay, entering runway. runway. Traffic just about to take off. Uh, runway. Runway 06 is we'll be climbing left. Checked. Yeah, that's confirmed. Can you start a left turn? Yeah, that's confirmed. South of uh, the runway heading. 06 is. So I want to be sure to understand exactly what you said. Yeah, not a problem. Can you start a left turn for a long uh, right downwind now? We'll have a departure C series runway 06. We'll be climbing runway heading. Do some lights and belts. Yeah, let's do the lights and belts. Lights and belts are done. Okay, auto throttles on. Uh, this time, I'm not sure I understood. No need for a left. There goes the seatbelt sign. Please sit down and buckle up. Thanks. 
And uh, so zero six checked, we're cleared. No discussion. Just listen to that guy. Fine, but he's he's fine. He's okay. clear. Super. So we're ready to go. All right. All Perfect. right. Ready. Off Let's do it. Fully ready. Okay. Yep. Enjoy. You too. And of course, all of you as well. Enjoy the flight. Let's go, get back. Roger. Um, yeah, uh, it should get better. The airport is uh, not great, but it's pretty good. <laughs> Set takeoff thrust. Good evening, a Baltic 9-8, SL1 out of Mirabel, uh, Mirabel 9 departure, passing 1,800 feet. A Baltic 9 Montreal, the middle identified, plus the 1-6,000. One 1-6,000, a Baltic 9 one 1-6,000, checked, and then we have the flight change. checked. Now that is set, checked. Order 472, contact Montreal, set on 128.77. 2 7 Six four five climb to one six thousand. One six thousand. I'll take nine eight zero one when able for direct Bieber on course. We go direct Bieber now. I'll take nine eight zero one. Bieber direct Bieber. Seven two off at twenty four left. Gonna direct. Confirm Bieber. Let's check. And execute. Then I can offer you. Well, now it's available already. Set so the heading to auto. Heading auto check and uh, I can climb sequence. Climb sequence. Flat one selected. Flap zero selected. And I can offer the after tank of checklist. That's your ICAS check. After tank of checklist complete. Thank you. Two eight two two. I'm all take nine eight seven. Bye bye. There we are. Nice. Ten thousand. Ultra Rail Center of Baltic 9801. Center, Roger, flight level 280. Flight level 280, Baltic 9801. Okay, so that's it. Uh, 280. 280. And we go to standard. Yeah. Standard is setting up. Yes. And uh, crossing 10,000 is a good time. Now I can do the lights and actually belts as well. Super lights are off. Belts are ordered. So, this is exactly as we were expecting. A nice departure. 
homeward. Yeah. Eastward. And we're nearly there. It's no, just 7 there. hours 41 to go. 7.41 to yeah. go. Jeez. And uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. For Riga arrival. 5. We have a 2 plus. Will feel like six. <laughs> That's for sure. So we'll initially level off for a flight level three nine zero. Spend a bit of time there, and then, yeah. uh, and then before we go for the north, we'll go up to four forward two. It should be that our uh, ACARS uh, starts working. Yeah. So um, I'm actually send a, a message to Riga. Uh, give, him, uh, give them the word that we're airborne. And uh, looking forward to coming home. Cool. Passing flight level 266 for 280. Passing 980, Michael Sagadi, climbing flight level 290. Climbing 290, Baltic 980. Okay, 290 set. 290 checked. Must be some traffic close by. No, nothing on the line yet. So I fired off a uh, ACARS message to, to operations. Let's see if uh, we get some response from them. Air Baltic 9801, take your choice and encore. Hoist direct to Baltic 9801, thank you. Can you put it up? Uh, yep. Hoist direct. Hoist. Confirm hoist. Yeah, that's checked. Execute. There we go. Okay, so that's a nice direct. Uh, Hoist is our entry point for the North Atlantic. Yeah. So we have to report or get a clearance half an hour before. 30 minutes before, correct. Yeah. And Hoist is actually just past the coast of, uh, of Canada. Yeah. North Atlantic. So we have an ETA over Hoist of about 2105. Uh, that's approximately. Air Baltic 980, one, climb to level 370. 370, Baltic uh, 980, okay. uh, 370 is set. 370 is checked. And uh, VFI level change checked. So I've got a data link message uh, coming in. Yep, that's pulled okay. up. Okay, have a look at it. Have a good day. Alright, great news. Guy to Yes. 
So someone's waiting for us. Yes. Air Canada 672, contact box the center, 128.05. Have a good day. Actually looking forward to a coffee. Got the... Yeah, he's not there. The engineers are yabbing. Always in the kitchen. Yeah. So with uh, 145 seats in the back, yeah, or four crew members have quite the choice. They do. Hello, my name is Andrei Svailas, I'm technical director of the Air Baltic. Normally the, the assembly of the aircraft is starting, started like uh, around six months ago and then it's uh, many parts are collected together in the factory of the Montreal. So there is many different suppliers including from the different areas of the uh, world, uh, Europe, uh, Asia, uh, USA. They produce the many parts and uh, that, that, that's, uh, that takes some time just to collect uh, the, 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 the aircraft. Uh, so the assembly of the aircraft is starting normally with the collecting of the so-called tubes. So they just put uh, the whole fuselage together and then they attach the wings. Then uh, they, they place the, the landing gears, just put the aircraft on the ground and move it to the different uh, stage of the assembly. Then it's coming engines, uh, some electrical systems, uh, all other systems, and then it's coming to the interior. So the interior at the moment is the, the longest part of the assembly at the moment. It takes about uh, almost two and a half, three months now, but uh, uh, Air, Airbus, they're trying to like expedite it and make it faster. Okay, so um, we're back now and uh, the flight's moving along very smoothly, very nicely, very calm. Um, we're on our North Atlantic uh, part of the flight. Uh, currently, uh, we are halfway between uh, the eastern coast of Canada and coming up to and halfway to the southern tip of uh, Greenland. And now we're just crossing over our position, uh, uh, our, our waypoint, where we have to make a, a position report. Uh, this uh, position is uh, 58 north and uh, 050 west. Uh, and so shortly, Gerhard will be in touch with uh, Gander Radio uh, to give them uh, our position report. Uh, in this part of the flight, uh, they're not using a surveillance radar, so. Uh, they don't have a direct uh, radar uh, view of us, and that's why the position report is uh, important for them to keep track of uh, where we're going. Yeah, and I think I'll quickly do that now, just to uh, to report where we are. 
Gander Radio, uh, Baltic 9801, position report. Baltic 9801, Gander Radio, go ahead. Uh, Baltic 9801, position uh, 58 north, 050 west, at 2139. Estimating uh, 61 north and uh, 040 west at 2224 and 62 north, 030 west next. And Baltic 9801. And Baltic 9801, Gander, roger. Your position report is received. Just uh, confirm you're still at flight level 410. AFO maintaining flight level 410, MAC 0.78. Roger, uh, Mac point seven eight, and uh, your uh, flight level four one zero. Your uh, make your four zero west position report on this frequency. This frequency, uh, the four zero west uh, Baltic nine eight zero one. Yeah, that's that's checked uh, nicely done. Okay, so currently we're uh, cruising at uh, Mac uh, point seven eight. Gives us a ground speed here because we've just uh, got a very light uh, tailwind. Um, it's a tailwind component of uh, roughly uh, 17 knots. Um, so it gives us a ground speed of 475 uh, knots. To point out the fuel efficiency on this, uh, on this aircraft, uh, we're currently um, having a fuel flow of uh, 1,700 kilos uh, per hour, um, which is, um, we're of course very light. Um, you have to say that um, because uh, we only have so to say four passengers on board that is not too many so uh, not really any payload um, nevertheless the uh, the fuel flow is of course extremely low if you compare that to uh, classic um, transport aircraft of this size uh, currently the UTC time is uh, 2148 uh, time aloft has been two hours and 40 minutes since departure and we have a total time of uh, or exactly five hours until uh, we're planning uh, to land. In those two hours and 40 minutes, um, this aircraft has burned uh, 5,535 kilos of fuel and uh, the distance flown 1,000, just coming up to 1,200 nautical miles with uh, 2,200 nautical miles to go. So uh, still early in, uh, coming up, uh, not yet halfway through the flight. The aircraft uh, came out from uh, acceptance just a, f a, f a few days ago in Mirabel and uh, it has not flown any commercial flights yet, uh, so it's uh, no passengers have been on board, only uh, people involved in the, in the production of the aircraft and also our team has been on board, so it's a pretty special feeling, uh, everything is so clean, uh, brand new, clean and untouched, has a, a new car smell inside, which is something uh, pretty pretty nice to have, and uh, uh, we know that once the aircraft lands, we have a pretty standardized process for, uh, for the aircraft to be prepared uh, for commercial flights. Uh, we can do that very quickly, and uh, actually uh, the team comes on board, um, makes some changes, and uh, both in terms of some configuration changes have to be made in, in some of the computers that we don't do <coughs> that we don't do in Mirabel, but we then uh, also prepare the cabin, uh, get some of our equipment and, uh, and uh, other loose equipment that has to be put on board. And uh, I'm sure that the aircraft will, will be landing in the morning uh, in, in Riga, early in the morning. And I don't know what the exact plan is when we get the a bit further on, we can make uh, we can make uh, we can get a bit, be in touch with uh, operations and find out what the exact plan is for this aircraft. I imagine that the aircraft will be in operations already. Uh, same day. Same day. So uh, within hours of uh, arrival, the aircraft will be actually uh, flying. Yeah. Would not be the first time we've done that so far. Um, we've had uh, very very short turnarounds. So ferrying the aircraft over from um, the production facility to Riga and then of course we've uh, got a commercial interest to put this aircraft into production as fast as possible and um, there's not too much work to be done anymore everything has been prepared and as Paul said um, magazines need to be put on board um, the passenger 
safety cards, um, and then uh, roughly you can uh, take the aircraft on its first commercial. Um, everything is so far set. Um, all the preparations um, would have been done before we even took delivery of the of the aircraft. I think we actually um, hold the world record for uh, putting uh, uh, commercial aircraft quickest into service, commercial service. Uh, once we were comfortable with the process uh, last summer, it was, uh, we delivered an aircraft, I did the ferry flight over, uh, landed, and uh, within uh, 60 minutes, so under an hour, the aircraft took off uh, or departed for uh, its commercial flight. So, of course, we, we pre-planned and made sure that everybody was really like a pit crew, like uh, on the Formula One, waiting for our arrival and then uh, doing everything that's needed. But uh, literally, uh, it was under an hour that the aircraft was already in commercial service after arrival from, uh, from the direct flight from Montreal. Yeah. A little bit more about the acceptance process. Um, so, uh, in, uh, in Mirabel, we have a a team, a team consisting of uh, uh, flight operations and uh, technical staff, and also uh, we have uh, some people coordinating the process. Also, uh, uh, eventually, also our legal teams are are, are involved. But in general, uh, the the aircraft goes through uh, uh, acceptance flight with our uh, where our uh, specialist, our technical pilot, is uh, putting the aircraft through the motions and uh, together with uh, with the uh, a test pilot or a, uh, a factory pilot from uh, Airbus Canada, where then they fly together a certain flight profile to uh, to check and demonstrate uh, certain certain functionality of the aircraft. This is probably the most important process of the acceptance. You know. Through the acceptance flight, uh, it's shown that all the systems are operating, and obviously, if any snag comes up during that process, then it's rectified prior to uh, the aircraft uh, coming into our ownership. Um, so we have uh, a few pilots uh, that are, are trained and uh, capable of doing this flight. Uh, Gerhard is also one of those pilots that uh, can, uh, can, can do this uh, flight profile and, uh, and make this technical acceptance. Maybe you have some words about the acceptance flight? Yeah, sure. Um, so the, uh, these acceptance flights, they of course have the, have the purpose to ensure um, that the aircraft is in a, in a perfect condition um, as we take over. Um, the ownership is still with the manufacturer, so the aircraft physically still belongs to Airbus at that time. And um, before we, how to say, uh, send over the money for the aircraft and physically take ownership of it, we want to ensure that everything works and is to the standards we expect um, coming from the production, which is um, a, st a standard process. And um, the, uh, the first acceptance flight is around four and a half hours it very much depends on the weather conditions we need certain weather conditions to fulfill certain tasks and uh, we need to have of course a certain area in which we perform this uh, this flight we need to have that reserve for us so around four and a half hours the one flight might take a little bit longer than the other and um, that is where we work off a certain um, certain tasks which are very clearly defined um, it is one of our pilots flying, so it would be either the technical pilot, um, I have the qualification as well as Paul said, and um, it is one of the, the pilots of um, Airbus Canada um, because of the, the legal side of them still having ownership. And um, then there are certain tasks in the cabin done at the same time. Um, we check cabin e equipment at certain altitudes. Of course, the, the cabin pressure varies between the aircraft being on ground and being on its uh, ultimate uh, cruising altitude of uh, 41,000 feet. And um, we have a, a, a cabin pressure difference of roughly um, uh, 8,000 feet. And we can see that now. We're cruising here at flight level 410. And we have down here the cabin at an altitude of 7,800 feet. So that is, of course, a significant pressure difference. And we want to just make sure that all the interior behaves the way we expect it to behave. All the lockers open, the, the, uh, the lavatories work in the, in the way they are expected to work. Um, of course, the galley equipment as well, um, ensuring that passengers get, our ser get, get their service um, uh, with, with meals and drinks, um, the way ex we, we expect to be able to serve them. Um, on normal uh, uh, flights uh, doing passenger service. 
So all of that gets tested during these uh, flights just to, to ensure that we've got confidence um, in this specific edition um, uh, and production number. Um, they are, of course, all produced to the same standards, but as we all know, there are always small little, little um, differences um, when it comes to the fine tuning, and we ensure that that is all done. We've got great support with, uh, with Airbus, as we've, we've always had from the very beginning um, of this, uh, this uh, aircraft. It is um, of, uh, um, how would you say that, excellence, uh, the, the, the way we are actually supported as a customer there. The, uh, the focus um, to the details and the support we get um, by all of those um, uh, employees involved from the manufacturer in this, um, in this handover process of the aircraft is, sick, is magnificent. And uh, we're very, very satisfied with the support we get there. And um, yeah, so it might be that uh, we would have to refly um, one uh, a certain portion of, uh, of this flight. That might have different uh, reasons. It might be that we couldn't see a certain detail. Um, it could be that we were not allowed by air traffic control to do a certain portion of that flight. Um, so it could be that we have to put a, a second or even a third cycle cycle um, uh, in, in, in this acceptance area onto the aircraft. And as I said before, this one here, for example, had 18 cycles. Um, a standard would be somewhere, something between 10 and 15. Um, so we see that at an early stage, even before we enter the scene and, um, and uh, start our acceptance process, that um, production pilots of the manufacturer have taken um, a lot of flights um, at an earlier time just to fine tune and make sure that everything is ready for us to, to start the acceptance. And finally, so once the aircraft is fine from a technical perspective and uh, a documentation point of view, then uh, basically it's agreed that uh, the aircraft uh, is, 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 is to change hands. And that's when the, the lawyers get involved in terms of uh, making the transaction um, and, uh, and uh, transferring uh, the agreed amount uh, from, from, one, from one account to the other. And uh, finally, there's a few signatures that are put in a few places and, uh, and the aircraft uh, legally changes ownership uh, from, from Airbus, uh, uh, the producer, to, to us. Or uh, if it, in the case uh, it's uh, through a, a leasing uh, process, then, uh, then there's the lesser who is the new owner of the aircraft. Um, we get documentation for the aircraft. We have, I think, uh, the, uh, the document binder that's put together together with all the required documentation for the aircraft, with uh, of course insurance being in place, and all the registration documents, uh, airworthiness documents are already all prepared, and uh, so the aircraft is technically ready to go and also legally ready to go, and, uh, and, uh, and that's when we take it home. Um, currently, we've got a rather standard configuration here on our screens. We've got five screens in total, where the two outer ones on the on the center panel are, of course, related to our flight instrumentation. And these you cannot change unless there would be a sort of non-normal um, configuration, a non-normal situation where we would lose a couple of screens. They would go blank. Um, then, of course, it would reconfigure and it would uh, take um, the, the big screen into a smaller format and um, squeeze other information into that main instrumentation screen. So with that, um, this is the normal configuration which we would then drive um, with the, the instrumentation on the outer ones and then on the on the um, two inner screens, we have um, maps which we display and um, we keep it as a standard that we would have on the, on the right partition of the uh, left center screen, um, we would then have our so-called ICAS um, in, uh, in information uh, display which gives us all of the essentials. So, um, Pauls will point that out. It uh, tells us something about our engines, for example, how at which speed they are actually running, what kind of temperature they are producing at the moment. 
Um, at the same time, we get information about uh, fuel flow um, and then on essentials like the oil temperature and the oil pressure um, in the engines itself, which is um, uh, are very important and vital uh, functions. White is good, so any figure here in, in, in white means we're in a normal uh, operating uh, condition. It's the vital information and that contains, of course, then the engine parameters. It contains the fuel in the three tanks we've got available. We've got two wing tanks and a center tank. And then we've got the, uh, the accumulated amount of fuel available. System-wise, flight control, so we see what uh, the position, rudder, elevator, aileron at all time. Uh, here we have our... Uh, we have our spoilers, our flight spoilers, our flaps, and when any change is made, then uh, that will be displayed and uh, information will be given here. So this is a normal flight, uh, normal cruise condition. That we have uh, the green now for, for the ailerons, elevator, and uh, rudder. And nicely centered, everything's uh, uh, in position. Fuel, I think we touched on. Hydraulics also, uh, same principle as we've seen in the other uh, <coughs> Uh, schematics uh, so we have three hydraulic systems and uh, we see the, the the status in terms of uh, temperature uh, quantity percentage within and this is fully normal everything green and uh, looking good so in earlier times you needed to you needed to basically know everything by heart and you would have a lot of memory items so memory items are things which you need to do in a case of abnormality by memory. So you need to remember, okay, this system doesn't work totally normal now. Now I need to do that and that and that. It is, of course, um, or, or things like that when it, when it uh, comes to memories are very vulnerable to, uh, to people making mistakes. It's just natural and uh, in the, in the um, how to say, a, a natural thing to the human that you would forget something or you wouldn't make a mistake. Um, so with that, um, it is a lot easier today to just look it up whatever you have and you make sure that you do not make mistakes there. Um, one may say that, um, how to say, the, the, the pilot work, the, the pilot life gets more simple and there's definitely something to it. It gets more sophisticated when it comes to other things. You didn't have uh, GPS navigation in earlier times. You didn't fly certain um, approaches in uh, in certain weather conditions um, in earlier times, and so forth. So there, there's just simply a shift of what a pilot needs to do today. And yes, there's a lot of more automation and a lot more support. Um, we just want to make sure that passengers can at any time rely on um, us um, operating this aircraft um, in, a, in an absolute safe way without um, putting these mistakes which you would naturally be able to do as a human um, to put them in. So um, very supportive um, as you have modern computer technology behind it and the presentation of modern computer technology, you are just able simply to have that all displayed and at your, um, at your convenience. One, two, seven, eight, five crossing into the Iceland uh, FIR, a Baltic 9801. Thank you, have a nice evening. That was uh, beautiful, that was a 10 out of 10. Uh, I could, you could use that in the uh, uh, communications uh, textbook. Nice, wow. nice, nice position report, well done. Well, thank you, yes. makes me blush. Yes, uh, but the next assignment is uh, we have our position, uh, our next position, uh, but he gave us uh, the the uh, the, uh, the command to switch to Iceland radio, uh, flying into the FIR boundary of Iceland, and uh, so this is something we'll have to pull up the charts and uh, try to find that IFR boundary, put it up on our page so we know when we should be uh, talking to uh, to. I didn't. Didn't mean we had to do it now. I'm just uh, sure. saying this is a little mental exercise that we're going to have to do is uh, try to nav navigation exercises to find this FIR boundary uh, for for Iceland. And that's of course where charts come handy, and um, they are nicely displayed. We use an EFB, so to say, so an uh, electronic flight bag, an EFB um, solution. We have a we have a, um, a portable EFB solution, so it's not built into the aircraft which has a lot of advantages. Um, 
first of all, you don't need to change the hardware of the aircraft itself on a frequent base. Um, as technology progresses, um, you can just do that on uh, on the with the EFB itself. In this case, it's a simple iPad which serves as the hardware. Nevertheless, it contains, of course, uh, software inside, um, and um, the uh, the maps we use um, they basically just reflect our flight routing, as we can see here. Pals has pointed that out at an earlier stage um, where we're actually going to progress, and we've just passed um, past Greenland here and um, then uh, Iceland is over here and he told us something about the FIR boundaries and they are clearly marked so once we get in there um, that is where we would uh, basically so uh, change over. So this is our waypoint that we're navigating to currently this is this uh, 62 north 030 west and before that some distance is this uh, dotted line uh, uh, dotted area which is the boundary between uh, Gander and Iceland, and yeah, the exercise will be to try to find where uh, exactly uh, on our route uh, this is. Oh, we have something on our uh, TCAS here. Uh, I didn't see this before. We have an aircraft uh, approaching us. So currently it's 20 miles out. It's, uh, it's uh, on our track, so it seems that they're tracking in the opposite direction. And uh, since we're on the same track uh, and uh, coming, uh, coming towards each other, Thankfully, they're not uh, at our altitude. We clearly see that uh, the aircraft is 1,000 feet below us. Yeah, uh, but 10 so miles out at the moment. Um, the aircraft, as we can see here on the screen, Pals is pointing it out. We can downscale a little bit. 10 miles out, so that's um, just uh, a short little while to go. We can see that it's very steadily maintaining 1,000 feet below. It's a minus there with one zero. So it's, um, it's in hundreds of feet um, displayed, so 10, 100 feet is 1,000. So we can very clearly see that, um, that uh, the, uh, the altitude uh, remains very, very steady. And that is just very simply to the fact that we uh, are all flying on uh, standard altimeter settings. So um, uh, when we fly in accordance with a flight level, then we fly with, um, we can see that Pulse will point it out, the standard altimeter setting, which is basically um, 1013, uh, if we take that into hectopascals exactly, which we would use in Europe, um, that is a standard setting and all of the aircraft would have the same setting above a certain altitude and with that we all have the same uh, distance so that just that we make sure that um, uh, there, there, there's no uh, um, risk of collision and difference in the, in the uh, altimeter readouts. So, um, Pals is the pilot flying uh, today on this, uh, on this ferry, and um, I'm the pilot monitoring. As a pilot monitoring, I do assistant work, if you want to say so. So that means, first of all, that I do all of the ADC communication, and uh, position reports are on, a, on an Atlantic crossing, of course, part of the, uh, the uh, ADC communication. Let them know where we are, where we want to go, uh, what our intentions are, and so forth. And um, the, uh, the other things are, of course, that um, when it comes to certain settings, the pilot flying, which is Pulse, uh, wants to have, um, it's then uh, my job to implement them. Um, so I do assistant work. Um, on a normal line flying day, when we go out and do a passenger flight, we typically fly from A to B, and then, of course, uh, back from B to A. And um, it will be one pilot then doing the first route and the other one doing the, the second route. And with that, we, uh, we change our jobs. Um, or the job content, if you want to say, in um, the sense of the one flies and the other one assists. And um, yeah, here my job is assisting. I do the paperwork, I check the fuel um, over certain waypoints and so forth.
So, um, we're back. Um, we are currently shortly before Iceland, as you can see here. We are very soon reaching the uh, beam position and um, and still steadily on our way to, uh, to Riga. And um, in the meanwhile, the sun has set um, on the uh, on the northern side, on Pal's side, then there's still a lot of a uh, lot of light blue sky, so to say, on uh, on my side here on the right. It's getting pretty dark. We've got the uh, the full moon up. Normally, we get into a romantic mode and then <laughs> put a candle up and hold hands and things, sing songs. Not this time. Not this time. But but actually, a very nice, uh, clear, uh, large uh, full moon for us. Yeah, yeah, really, which is uh, very pleasant. Very low uh, cloud field. We can't really see anything. Of the uh, of the ground. Now, where we were, uh, just uh, one one more note. So we have the sunset behind us, yeah. and uh, actually, quite uh, shortly, we would expect to uh, we'll have a sunrise, or, or it's starting to get light again uh, up in the up in the, uh, the, the north uh, over Europe, and uh, we'll see it uh, to my left there. Um, time time wise. Uh, we're in now uh, aloft, time aloft is 4 hours and 17 minutes and uh, time to go is 3 hours and 23 minutes so you know, we're nice, nicely over the halfway point. Uh, we by the way, that's our Baltic, uh, we were the worldwide launch operator for the uh, larger version of this aircraft, the one that we operate which is the 300 version so we were the world launch operator of the Airbus, uh, the C-Series uh, 300 at the time, uh, the Airbus 220-300. Yeah, where Pals, so we, we have a lot of firsts, and uh, Pals has been the first one to uh, actually actively fly um, uh, outside of the customer acceptance, so he did the first ferry flight of this aircraft, uh, which we did together as a team. Nevertheless, Pals did that flight, and um, we're all very proud, of course, of, the, uh, of uh, this entire process we have been involved in. Um, to have that opportunity um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a human being, as a, as a pilot, um, as a company as such, is, um, is, a, is a great thing to experience. And um, uh, we've, had, we've had lots of great moments um, just uh, uh, being involved in, this, uh, in the introduction um, of this uh, new aircraft. Yeah. Um, maybe one first uh, we had together, as you mentioned, that we did last fall, so um, less than half a year ago, uh, we had the opportunity in the fall to uh, fly a very special VIP passenger. And I guess in terms of VIPs, uh, there are only a few in the world that uh, rank up in this level. Yes, it's been been the Pope. Um, we were in the uh, in the uh, very special and, and very honourable position to uh, to be able to fly him on uh, a tour um, of the Baltics. So he visited the Baltic states, and um, we were chosen to uh, to provide transportation for him, and, um, and that was a was a very very special experience overall. Yes. With modern technology, where you have um, um, computers behind just everything. All of this, uh, the data transferred from one system to the other, um, it's not only presented here on screens in the in the flight deck, but of course it gets recorded as well, so system behavior. Some of it which we don't even get to see um, and which not necessarily needs to be non-normal. It could be just normal operations of the system. But all of this data gets collected and it gets transferred automatically um, into our headquarters, into the maintenance department, um, so that they have an active picture of how the aircraft is actually as a technical tool behaving. So once we get to Riga and we land there, um, we might see technicians there um, who want to just do a checkup on a certain system or um, who uh, just know about a certain system behavior, which is in limits um, for us pilots, but which we might, um, how to say, have a certain attention by the technicians themselves. Um, so with modern technology of, uh, of collecting data, recording it, and being able to transfer it, um, uh, the uh, the intensity of um, being able to to look at um, the behavior of the tool itself um, is uh, a much more easy. Uh, 
yeah, one thing I, I definitely need to uh, and want to uh, mention is, uh, is, is about uh, pilot recruitment and also our, our pilot academy. Uh, I'll maybe uh, do, do a few words about the academy and then uh, Gerhard will, will fill us in a bit more about uh, recruitment. So, um, since last uh, April, so it's been over a year, uh, Air Baltic Training has uh, opened up, uh, expanded its uh, portfolio, uh, training portfolio to include uh, ab initio uh, pilot training. Uh, for the for the instructors, of course, uh, they uh, are active uh, airline pilots with us and uh, they do part-time um, within that entire job uh, engagement. Um, they work as instructors in the academy and it's of course an, an, an excellent opportunity to uh, have the full diversity of whatever aviation uh, um, might offer to a pilot. Instructing, flying online, um, uh, doing um, different different jobs um, throughout the month. Uh, it's a nice opportunity which um, a lot of pilots welcome. Not everybody, some of them just like to fly from A, a to B every day. Um, some others like to, like to pick up their more diverse uh, variation. Um, when it comes to pilot selection um, itself, of course, the, the young students who come from the Pilot Academy have already got a good, very good chance to, to get in. Um, first of all, specifically if they're trained with us, um, they've uh, been trained up to, first of all, on, on very modern equipment, up to excellent standards, which we require um, uh, our pilots to have. Um, and all of the training which has been conducted in the Pilot Academy has been, of course, with a very, very clear focus of operating a modern aircraft like this. So, um, as they have excellent and brand new equipment in the Pilot Academy, it's a very, very good baseline um, to get started on an aircraft like this. We have an, a, a lovely climate in our company uh, when it comes to, to the people working with, with each other. And we'd like to keep that. Um, we'd like. The, the, the person joining us as well, knowing that he comes into an environment where it's just fun to work with the people in our company. And um, so we look at the personality of the person and um, if, he, if he fits to us. If that's or she, of course, we're, we're, we're more than welcome uh, looking into female pilots. Unfortunately, the number of female pilots, first of all, available on the market is rather low. Um, and we'd like to encourage um, uh, females to, to join this uh, fantastic job. We are a multinational um, company. We focus on a single language. We speak English with, with each other. Um, Pals is Latvian. I am German. Um, we communicate in English. Um, it's the aviation standard. That's what we do. And um, everybody in, in, in the company has that as his, as his first company um, uh, language. Yeah. So uh, I mentioned the Pilot Academy, which is a way to, you know, it's actually, if, if, you, if you kind of step back, it's pretty unbelievable that. Yeah, there's a way that uh, someone can go from zero and uh, two years later, it's not even two years later, be sitting in this, in this cockpit uh, flying this aircraft. Yeah, the pilots which join us, uh, join us on, on different levels of uh, experience, of course. Um, we do require experience. Um, if, they not, uh, if they don't come out of, the, uh, out of our own pilot academy, where we do know exactly about every single step they've taken during their training and where we have influence on the training itself, um, then we do require, um, first of all, um, excellent um, uh, backgrounds on education and experience. Uh, the aircraft we fly is a, a Dash 8 Q400. It's the fastest turboprop, a commercial turboprop on the market. And um, yeah, the, the pilots need to really know what they're doing um, before they get a direct entry captain seat um, in this company. Um, maybe worth to say that um, there is no direct entry captain coming onto this aircraft here. They all have to come out of our own pilot corps. They have to be working for Air Baltic um, and being uh, able to demonstrate their proficiency, their ability to, uh, to work in, in our team, um, integrate, um, show on a, on a constant base their, um, their proficiency. Um, um, so do we, we do only want to move people out of different other positions into the left seat on this aircraft. Um, nevertheless, yes, um, the, the, the position we have on offer on the market is uh, pretty interesting actually. It's a direct entry captain's position for the, uh, for the turboprop and it gives those captains a guarantee that no later than one and a half years um, they will be um, in the left seat of this A220. And um, I think uh, you can really search for, for an offer like that. Um, that is something pretty unique.
so here we are, sunrise, day again, and uh, we're in the home stretch. Yes, we're very much in the home stretch, uh, back in familiar, very familiar territory over the Baltic Sea, Air Baltic over the Baltic, and uh, soon to be starting our descent into Riga. Uh, just looking, I see that we've been flying for seven hours and ten minutes and uh, 30, 35 minutes to go. Uh, a uh, few more stats. Uh, we have uh, used so far 12,545 kilos of fuel. On board we still have 4,400, so that's plenty. We could still keep going yes. for quite, uh, quite some more distance. The perfect, uh, uh, perfect flight so far, nice and smooth. No, aircraft's been uh, working beautifully. Uh, the, it never really got dark. True. Uh, we had uh, the some, north. Yeah, the northern sky was uh, yeah. had some light uh, the whole flight through. On your side, uh, the southern part was uh, dark, but uh, nice and smooth and uh, uh, nice flight so far. How are you feeling? Yeah, totally fine. Home soon. So, uh, the, uh, the Red Eye special is coming to an end. Yeah, it's coming to an end. Since we'll be starting our descent in uh, some five to ten minutes, just uh, we can, we've set up the FMS, but uh, we can run through our uh, through what we what we're preparing for and a short briefing on on, on our approach to our uh, home base. Um, so in Riga, weather's good. Uh, actually, very nice. It's Cab OK. Yep. Uh, light wind, uh, uh, five to seven knots from the west. So it's exactly from the west. Uh, it could be any runway, but it's runway 180 in use for Riga. And uh, uh, dry, dry runway uh, and uh, 15 degrees Celsius. So nice morning. It'll be warming up and uh, it should be a nice, uh, smooth, smooth arrival in. Uh, in terms of. Uh, what we have in the FMS. Yeah, we'll start shortly. It looks like uh, uh, three to five minutes we'll start our descent. Uh, um, inbound. Um, so far we have the 10C4 Alpha arrival in the FMS with the transition Gudin for ILS-18. Uh, we're actually already inbound to the uh, to Gudin, so that means that uh, we, we're expecting to not even uh, not even have the arrival as being relevant. Sure. Uh, arrival data, it's uh, ILS-18, uh, frequency 111, uh, final approach course 178, uh, and the uh, glide slope angle is 3 degrees, and the threshold elevation is 31. We know uh, this is correct uh, from our uh, chart for runway 18. Uh, I've set up a flap 4. Uh, performance uh, with the speed uh, 119er. Our landing weight is 42.4 uh, tons. Checked. Uh, landing performance has been checked with, uh, for, uh, for the approach to be 119. Uh, we have the uh, auto brake set on low. Uh, we're very light. Yeah. Our, our normal SOP would be uh, landing with uh, medium auto brake. They can actually start the descent. Riga Labrit, Baltic 9801. Uh, direct to Gudin, and we're at flight over 410 and requesting descent. Labrit, uh, Air Baltic 9801, Riga Control, identified distance level 110. Sunny flight over 110, Baltic 9801. Okay, so flight level 110 is set. 110, check. We'll go into vertical speed, so V vertical speed, and, uh, and a very shallow descent for the time being. Uh, 500 feet per minute is set to. Cool. Yeah, so landing performance is checked uh, with the ref speed of a uh, 119 or 154. Hey. Yeah. Um, and just a final review of the um, approach, the ILS approach uh, for runway 18. We have the plate from uh, uh, 25 January 19, it's 11-1. Uh, yep. 
Frequency triple one one as checked in the FMS final approach course one seven eight. Uh, we have a safety altitude seventeen hundred feet uh, uh, for this arrival and also for the go around. We're going inbound to Gooden and uh, we'll be ready to also take it a bit shorter uh, for the arrival. I'm sure ATC will allow us to do it. So it'll be two thousand five hundred feet or down to one thousand five hundred. They set the, the localizer. Yeah, that's checked, okay. Check, check. Um, minimum, I need to put that up. 240 burrows set, and uh, the missed approach uh, is climb on track 178 to 1200, then it's a left burn, radial 173 to rec B, climbing 2500. Yeah. Um, when we vacate, uh, we're going to be vacating to the left, expecting to do that on Charlie. And it'll be a very short taxi in uh, because we're going to uh, uh, 218. So uh, we'll just have to make sure we uh, follow the three minute cooling period for the engines because we'll probably arrive on the stand faster than, than uh, the three minutes. Clear. That. Is my briefing any questions on that? Yeah, no, that? not at all. No. Okay. Good. Uh, then in this case, let's do the descent and approach checklist. Please. Descent and approach checklist. So we've got the wing at uh, says an open night. Um, FMS. Uh, it's uh, set. The minimum. Uh, Two forty set. The order brake low. ICAS. ICAS is checked. And the approach briefing is complete. And uh, one item to go, the uh, swing, so yeah. we've got the checklist started. Okay, that's complete, thank you. So, we have just gerade eben mit unserem Anflug auf Riga begonnen and um, we are also auf einem direkten, uh, auf einer direkten Route um, zu einem bestimmten uh, Punkt, der dann uh, uns in die uh, in die südliche Landebahn hineinführt, ähm, Richtung 1.8 äh, werden wir heute landen. Ähm, wir sind relativ leicht, jetzt mit äh, 42,4 Tonnen. Wir waren jetzt natürlich auch eine ganze Zeit unterwegs und zwar bis jetzt äh, 7 Stunden und 18 Minuten. Und jetzt haben wir dann doch nochmal äh, 26 Minuten vor uns. Äh, da sind wir dann auch ziemlich froh, dass die dann äh, irgendwann auch rum sind. Und ähm, wir haben jetzt die Sonne direkt im Gesicht. Die Sonne ist also richtig aufgegangen und äh, ist natürlich einerseits sehr schön, andererseits nach so einer langen Überführungsnacht ähm, sind wir dann auch froh, dann irgendwann am Boden zu sein. Das machen wir dann auch bald. Und ähm, Pauls hat seine, seine ähm, Vorbereitungen für, die, für den Anflug und die Landung soweit abgeschlossen. Wir haben gerade eben gebrieft und ähm, ja, wie gesagt, wir erwarten jetzt in 26 Minuten dann auch am Boden zu sein. Haben dann nur ein kurzes äh, kurzes äh, Ausrollen sozusagen in unsere Parkposition und äh, da haben wir uns, werden wir uns dann wahrscheinlich noch mal kurz widersprechen. Also, the depart is coming in. Let's check. Check. And the path. Check. Uh, your ATC, I'm going to take the um, 
The passengers? Fine. Well, cool. No passengers are <laughs> our crew. Uh, yep. Give them a, a heads up. We're on a direct uh, track for a landing uh, on runway 18, so it means uh, from the Gulf side uh, southbound uh, to Riga. We'll be landing pretty shortly, less than 20 minutes to go. Uh, weather for Riga is perfect. Uh, light wind from the east. Clear skies. And morning temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. So it should be a nice, uh, warm, pleasant day for our arrival. Uh, it means our landing is uh, is going to be at uh, five minutes before uh, six in the morning, so 5.55 local time. And our stand will be uh, 2 and 8. So actually we'll have a very short taxi and we'll be already on the stand uh, for arrival. Our team is waiting for us, uh, and so we'll shortly be back uh, now on the ground. Uh, back uh, with the rest of our team. Okay, I hope you had a good rest, a uh, good flight, and uh, see you in Riga. Airbody 9801, contact uh, Riga approach on 129, and there's one 925, goodbye, miss bubble. 2925, bubble, take 9821. Riga Labri, Table 6, 9, 8, zero, 1, with Zulu. Table 6, 9, 8, zero, 1, Riga, approach Labri, identified, vectoring, follows approach, runway 1, 8, continue to Udin, expect 6, 0, track mouse to touch down, descent 4,000 feet, can H1, 0, 8. Zuma, good in, descending 4,000 feet, 1, 0, 1, 9, Table 6, 9, 8, zero, 1. One zero one niner. One niner. Yeah, and, and uh, I just to check what the three zero zero nine. And uh, yeah, so it's four thousand set, and uh, we can go then to uh, one one zero one nine. There we are. Good. And the track miles were checked, so it's more or less uh, sixty. So it's actually what what is it now? Yeah. For yeah. Full approach. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. That means, uh, if you could give me, please, I'll go into vertical speed. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, soft and uh, that uh, uh, extended center line from uh, Foxtrot to India. Super the extended center line. Confirm? Yep, that's checked. Excellent. Perfect. <coughs> Looks like one layer of cloud up yeah, here, yeah. yeah. 6,000 feet, approximately. Riga approach, uh, Lavrik, the Baltic 409er, uh, information X-ray. The Baltic 409er, Riga approach, Lavrik, identified 60 track mouse, attached down, expect vectors, descend 5,000 feet, QNH 1018. Descending 5,000 feet, uh, QNH 1018, and uh, copy the Baltic 409er. Baltic 9 one QNH 1018. 1018, I'll take 98801. 1018. And that's uh, setting cross checked. Good. You see the cruise ship coming in for a day? Yep. Hard to see. Yeah. 
Artemis. Ja. Okay, speed's looking good, so uh, flap one, please. Flap one selected. Double six nine eight zero one. Turn left, heading one zero zero. Left one zero zero. About six nine eight six one. Left for some reason, huh? Yeah. One zero three zero good. Air Baltic 03 X ray, descent to flight level 60. Flight 60, Air Baltic 03 X ray. A1000 to go on 1018. Let's check with 1018. Touchdown, turn right heading 140, clear out approach runway 18, report the station on the local hazard. Right 140, clear the RS, uh, 18, go established, 980. Okay, alt has captured, 2500. We'll clear the approach on heading 140, so we have approach on the sound. Checked. Affirm, would be nice, yeah, short approach for Baltic 409, thank you. Baltic 409, turn left heading 345, descend 2500 feet. Left heading 345 and descent 2500 feet, the Baltic 409. Approach, good morning, Baltic 8 to 10 November. Uh, information uh, Yankee, request free speed and short approach. Baltic 8, hotel November, number 4 in sequence, uh, request copy it after Gunta. Approach, FS1, Lock 1, Lock 2, let's see. Let's check it. Conta and then zero two zero a right down. And uh, lock one. Check. And establish localizer. Yeah. Establish localizer nine miles, about nine eight zero one. About nine eight zero one, contact Rigat Tower, one one eight is no one zero five, it's level. Eighty one zero five, about nine eight. Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five hundred. Checked. Uh, we're clear That's to land. Checked. We're clear to land. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, uh, select landing gear down and uh, landing sequence. Gear down selected. Landing sequence. Flap three selected. And I'll take it uh, manually now. So auto throttle is disconnected. Auto -throttle. Cool. Auto That's the autopilot. Checked.
lap four selected. Okay. And the before landing check is altimeters. Uh, one zero one eight. Uh, set and cross check. Set and cross check one zero one eight. Flap four indicating. And the cabin. It's ready. With that, that's before landing check is complete. We are clear to land. Yeah, check clear to land. And we actually uh, managed to beat the, the crowd. Yeah, we did. Three aircraft behind us. We are stabilized and clear to land. Check and contact. Checked. A little bit of a crosswind on the left. Yeah, 26, 27. You can see them. Down. 
Рига Граунд, Эрболтик, Янки, Лима, Чарли, Сиерега. Янки, Лима, Чарли, Сиерега, Граунд. First, stand here is 218, the one that we need. Coming in, uh, taxi lights off, please. Taxi lights is off. Don't go through the vapor. No, uh, big. Ebolic 409, wind 090 degrees, 6 knots. No big uh, celebration for our arrival here. It is disappointing. But How can that be? But most importantly, we see Gatis yeah. waiting for us. Got this is always waiting for our aircraft and we thank him for that. No steer. Off. The APU uh, and or external uh, power. This is related. Yeah, the door slides disarm. Nice with the um, connection. Just check one. Uh, the front doors are disarmed. Uh, APU is uh, is running. APU is on. So. APU is on. Yeah. And uh, three minutes are coming to. Yep. We have the three minutes. Perfect. Left engine run. Off. Right engine run. Off. Seat belts. Off. Beacon. Off. Fucking tortoise not required now. The hydraulic 3A. Uh, it's uh, off. 3B. Off. 2B. Off. And then ground power is available. Yeah. And shutdown checklist is complete. Good morning. Continue. That's it. There we are. There we are, Gerhard. Yes. Uh huh. So it looks like after seven hours and 45 minutes airborne, Yankee Lima Alpha Alpha Romeo is back. No, it has arrived to its new home. Exactly. So has number 18 in the fleet. Some of the others are standing here uh, around and they will go out for some flights. Same as this one here later on. So it's been a pleasure flying with you today and uh, we can wish Alpha Alpha Romeo many, many, happy many landings. happy and safe landings. I hope that's true. Okay, let's do it again. Definitely. So, hier sind wir in Riga. Ähm, jetzt sind wir nach sieben Stunden 45 Minuten hier gelandet und ähm, das hat uns dann äh, mal für den Überführungsflug eben 13, drei, drei, etwas mehr als 13 Tonnen Schmidt gekostet. Ähm, wir sind jetzt hier, die Sonne ist lange, vor langer Zeit aufgegangen und ähm, wir freuen uns jetzt auf ein bisschen Ruhe und auf unser Bett irgendwann demnächst. Und, äh, Nummer 18, Alpha Alpha Romeo, das ist die, das, das 18. Äh, A220 Modell in unserer Flotte und äh, ja, wir wünschen dem Flugzeug hier viele gute Landungen und den Besatzungen, die damit fliegen, ähm, stets sichere Flüge und, ähm, und viel Spaß vor allen Dingen. Ja, viele, viele. Viele, viele. Gute Landungen. Genau, genau, ja, genau. Ja. ja. Super. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen.